So the other day, as I was cruising up the M6 in the Range Rover, without warning, the dashboard suddenly lit up with Adaptive Dynamics Fault. Now this is the first time, probably the only time, I've ever been very happy to see a warning light pop up on the dashboard of my car. As you guys will know, I've been chasing a Adaptive Dynamics suspension problem with this car ever since I bought it, which has been causing a really uncomfortable ride. So when it popped up with an Adaptive Dynamics warning on the dashboard, I was happy that it's finally come up with an error that I can actually trace, read the fault codes, and figure out what it was. So now that it's actually come up with an error on the dashboard, that means it's logged a fault code somewhere in the Adaptive Dynamics system. And that means hopefully we can find out what's causing this issue and put it right once and for all. So what I'm gonna do is plug in my IID tool. Uh, which I purchased recently from one of my subscribers, which is very nice. Um, plug that into the OBD2 port, connect it to my phone, and then we're going to read the fault codes that are logged on the car. So let's do that now. So the OBD2 port on these is located just above the accelerator pedal. So ignition on. So we're going to go into the IID tool on my phone. Uh, we're going to connect to the last known IID tool, which will connect me to my tool that's connected to the car. It'll load everything in and we're going to go straight into the faults menu and then it's going to read the faults for us. So there are a few other faults in here that I'm aware of that um, have been in there for a while. Um, apparently there are two dead speakers which I don't know why it says that because I, they all seem to be working to me. Um, we've got some other faults uh, elsewhere in the system so let's have a look at the adaptive damping. So that is indeed when it was triggered the 23rd of April at 2 o'clock. Um, it's telling me rear left height sensor, general electrical failure, circuit short to ground or open. So that's telling me that the it's that the adaptive damping module is seeing an issue with that let rear left height sensor. The reason the height sensors are anything to do with the adaptive damping system is that on this model of Range Rover, um, there's actually two sensors within each sensor module. One of them is used by the um, actual air suspension module, which is for the height of the vehicle, and the other one is for the adaptive damping module, which basically reports to the damping module how much the wheels are moving up and down relative to the body. So um, that's telling us that that part of that sensor is duff. Now luckily, I have one of those sensors in a box upstairs, so I'm going to go and grab that, we're going to get it fitted, and we'll see if this sorts all our issues out. And there is our height sensor lurking at the back there that you guys can just see. Time to get it out. So firstly, I'm just going to try and pull off this connector, which looks very crusty. I do believe you're supposed to just be able to squeeze these tabs in and pull. <coughs> there we go. Bit of a faff. There we go, a bit of a faff, but that's off now. So now that's off, we need to take off the bottom part of the arm, which is this 13mm nut here. There should also be a 10mm to counter hold on the back of this here. There we go, like that. Get my spanner back. There we go. So now that that arm is disconnected, we can move it up and down, which is what we need to do to be able to get to the little screws that are holding it in from that direction. So the arm, in some position, blocks the screws. So you need to have that moving freely so you can get your uh, tool in there.
That's our height sensor removed. So here we have our old height sensor and our new height sensor. Uh, this is the original Land Rover one on, uh, that I'm taking off, and this is a Bear Mac one that I'm putting back on again. As you can see, they're both exactly the same. Um, only differences I've just noticed are the original Land Rover one is really, really floppy. Like it's this is really well worn, um, and there's even if you guys can see that there's even a tiny bit of uh, side to side wiggle there, as if it's kind of a bit, a bit worn out. Um, could be original. Probably done quite a few miles, so. So it's looking pretty likely this is going to be the culprit for our DTC we had earlier. Right, let's get the new one thrown on and see if that sorts all of our issues out. Knit these up. No need to go too crazy with these. Now, all we've got to do is put our arm into the proper position on the lower control arm, find a nut, which annoyingly, Bearmac didn't supply a new one. I had to go and get a new nut guys, I couldn't put an old nut back on that nice new sensor. And back on our 13, let's do it back up again. Okay. Nice and tight. And then all we got to do is find our wiring loom, which I've tucked away up there. Bring that back round. Pop it on. And there we go, that's one new height sensor fitted. Hopefully that sorts all of our issues out. Oh, these are some heavy beastly wheels. Okay, so we've just replaced that height sensor, we're back in the Range Rover now. We're going to fire it up and see if it will self-level. Um, now, by the book, you are supposed to calibrate your suspension ride height every time you change a ride height sensor, um, and I will do that eventually, um, as there will be differences between um, what different sensors are reading at the same height. So, um, But for now, we're just going to start it up. Um, the ride will probably be a bit un unlevel, but I just want to make sure that ride height sensor is um, working and it clears the fault with adaptive damping. So let's start it up and see what happens. So it's asking me to confirm the required suspension height, which is no no big surprise. So we're going to go normal road height, and we'll see what she decides to do. So the back's coming up, which is good. You can hear the compressor running in the back because I've got the the, um, the rear boot floor taken out. So the ride height level indicator down here has stopped flashing now, which indicates that it's it's reached the desired ride height, or at least the car thinks it has. So as you guys can see, it's saying we're at normal ride height and it's not flashing anymore, which means it thinks it's at the right height. So let's go outside and have a look what it looks like. So it's looking a bit low on that back left corner, but that's not actually too bad. It's, it's fairly close to where it's supposed to be. Um, I'll pull it around onto some flat ground and we'll see what it looks like on some flat tarmac because my driveway is on a bit of a slope. So I've just pulled the Range Rover onto some flat ground and it's not sitting too badly at all, actually. Um, that's probably pretty close to where it should be. Um, I expected it to be a lot worse than that, so uh, that's a positive at least. I probably still will do a calibration on it at some point soon though, just to um, make sure it's fully as accurate as can be, but as you guys can see, it's pretty damn even all the way around. 
Anyway, let's go for a drive and see what it feels like. So I've been driving for a few minutes now guys and it pains me to say this, but it feels the same. <laughs> oh god, I really thought I had it this time. Um, yeah, I really thought because we'd seen that uh, di diagnostic code come up, um, that that had finally revealed itself, that fault. Um, and it may still yet be that fault that is related to the issue, um, because although it said it was an open circuit on the sensor, that could also be related to the wiring to the sensor. And because that fault was intermittent, uh, meaning that when you keyed off and back on again, it would clear the fault. Um, it, it does seem like it does seem like a wiring fault is at least possible. Um, so, so my next avenue to go down is going to be the wiring, and I'll try and trace that wiring out and uh, figure out if that's the issue. Um, of course that, that error message could just be a red herring and it could be nothing to do with the problem I'm having um, but at the moment that seems like the most likely candidate so that's the path we're going to go down next. I do know that I've got at least one other wiring fault on this car which is to do with the rain sensor and one of the trouble codes that I've got that's logged as like a permanent code is a CAN bus signal missing for that uh, rain sensor and I know that that's, that's caused by a, a splice in the wiring which sits underneath the driver's um, sort of sill plate as you step in. So um, that's going to be something I'll fix when I take the seeds out. Um, could it be possible that there's another wiring issue to do with the adaptive damping module and the, and the height sensors, perhaps in the same area? Who knows? We'll try and find that out. I need to trace the wiring diagrams and see where the wiring runs. Um, but So yeah, unfortunately, it seems like we haven't solved it just yet. Bugger. I initially tried replacing that rain sensor, uh, which didn't fix the issue, but I'll show you guys the footage anyway, because it's um, it might be useful for you guys to know how to do it. So while you guys enjoy that footage, I'm going to head back to the house, grab myself a beer, look at some wiring diagrams, and try and figure out this issue with the adaptive, adaptive damping system. So anyway, see you guys in a bit. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the issues I've been having is that the rain sensor and headlight sensor aren't working on this. Uh, so this is a new sensor, or it's actually a second-hand sensor from a Discovery 4, but it's the same part that's used on the Range Rover, so uh, this should be good. Um, to get it, to, to replace it, I think all, all we've got to do is take the rear view mirror off and the little plastic trim around it, um, peel the old sensor off, affix the new one using a new 3M uh, clear gel which is what sticks it to the windscreen and allows the sensor to pick up the, on the light. Now I think we've got to go into diagnostics and calibrate the new sensor so let's see if we can get it done. So to get this trim off I'm just going to use a little screwdriver to prise the two pieces apart like that and then it should just pop off like that. Easy as that. That's how the rear view mirror comes off, you just twist it and we're just going to unplug that to get it out of the way. Pretty easy. So there is our sensor. I'll zoom you guys in so you can see it. That is what picks up on the rain and I think it basically uses the light sensor to detect when the rain is on the, hit on the windscreen. And the same goes for the headlights as well obviously. So what we've got to do is undo these clips somehow not sure how yet and then it should just peel off the windscreen so let's give that a go so we're just gonna pull these two little clips off which is as simple as that and then we've got to get this unstuck from the windscreen which is easier said than done so I think what I'm going to get is a, one of my little uh, plastic spodger tools to see if I can just prise it away gently. So I said this is kind of glued onto the windscreen with a, a 3M pad, so you've got to get your tool in behind the front edge and slowly try and prise it away.
a bit like that. So there we have our old sensor with the old pad on the bottom of it. Um, all we've got to do now is transfer these brackets, these clips onto the new sensor, um, clean up the windscreen, put a new sticky pad on the new sensor and then pop it all back together again. So I'm just going to use a bit of goo gone and then a bit of uh, brake cleaner just to clean up that spot on the windscreen. And probably the same on the, uh, the new module as well, second hand module I should say. Got a bit of goo gone on our piece of kitchen roll there, it's going to give that a bit of a, a wipe up. And next we're just going to give that a really quick spray with our brake cleaner to remove any residue of that stuff. And finally give it another quick wipe up with the cloth. So here we have our good used uh, rain and light sensor. Now I've just, I've just taken off the original adhesive pad on the bottom there. Um, and I'm going to give it a quick clean up. I'm going to give it another quick clean up with uh, Goo Gone and then a bit of brake clean just to make sure it's nice and fresh and clean before we put it on. Um, So there we go, there's our lovely fresh clean sensor ready to go on. There we go, that's our two windscreen clips fit back on again. So before I fit this, I'm going to give it one final clean with brake clean just to make sure none of my greasy prints are on there. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Let's find our adhesive, wherever that's gone. These are actually sold by a guy on eBay. Um, they're they're pre-cut to the, the right size for the vehicle, so hopefully this should just go straight on without any need for uh, adjustment and trimming. But yeah, you can see it's proper it's proper 3M stuff, and it's actually see-through, like the original stuff was. So let's get rid of this stuff. Apply it to the module like that, making sure it's securely stuck on there. And then we're going to peel the other side of the adhesive off. And you can see our nice, clear, fresh adhesive. So we've got to make sure you get this on the right way now. Plug facing upwards. We're going to get this as nice and central as we can. and then push it up really well onto the screen. <laughs> okay, looks good from the outside. So now that I'm happy that's in the right position, I'm going to apply the clips, which work by just clipping in like that, both sides. And then you just bring these round over center just to hold it in position nicely. Plug it in, and there we go. That's that job done, hopefully. You know what, I really like the way that mirror's attached. It's quite satisfying. Really solid when it's on as well. Okay, trim's back on again. And that should be job jobbed. Now let's test it.